again folks. I've been getting a lot of questions about von Mises stress and I think that's probably a pretty good topic for a video. So let's maybe learn a little bit about that. Now, von Mises stress is a little different than the normal stress you're used to thinking about in that it's a calculated thing. It's uh, different than the, the failure uh, stress you're used to looking at. Everybody has seen some sort of 1D test. Maybe we have a little dog bone here. Yes, symmetric, I can get that. Eh, that's close enough. Have a dog bone test. Maybe we put a strain gauge on here or an extensometer or something and apply forces to the end using maybe a test machine. And we know what the force here is and we know what the strain is. We wind up calculating a stress strain curve, really measuring a stress strain curve. And the curves for a ductile material, and we're talking. Okay, we're talking about ductile materials here, okay? And so we'll have stress there and strain there, and the slope of that line is the elastic modulus. Now this is all really well defined because it's one dimensional. If I had a, well, I've got a piece of brass brazing wire here, I don't know if you can see this, but it's got, uh, got some kinks on the end of it. If I were to pull on this, all right, that's unidirectional. There's only force in that direction. There's only stress in the vertical direction here. That's easy to figure out. Easy to draw stuff like this. Now here's a part that's a lot more complicated. This is the riser off a, uh, or the part of the beginnings of a riser, off a compound bow. Okay, this is a very complicated geometry. Now I'm left-handed, I would shoot this backwards, but if you hold it out like this, there's, there's uh, moments here big, big, big ones, okay? There's a very complicated stress field around this part, okay? When you start getting those complicated stress fields, this idea of this unidirectional stress starts to be kind of stretched. Is this really the way we want to do this? Because what we're doing is we say, okay, there's a, right about there is where the elastic limit is, okay? The line is straight here, and it starts to curve there. When it starts to curve, that means I've got plastic deformation. So maybe I want to call this sigma yield. That's the yield stress, the point at which you start to get plastic deformation. It makes it, It's easy to define here. Well, okay, you can calculate stresses in all directions, but is yield stress from a 1D part really what you want to use to define failure? Well, maybe, okay? And here's the, the there's a whole field of study called failure theories, and there's several popular failure theories out there. Von Mises is one of those, and it's probably the most commonly used. Okay? When you're looking at von Mises stress, here's the big idea. Okay? Sigma yield is not enough. Okay? Okay, just knowing what sigma yield is, well, just comparing stresses in different axes to, to sigma yield is perhaps not enough. There are other ideas of how materials fail. And these failure theories work on the micromechanical level. Okay, so we're interested in maybe how atoms are slipping in the, the crystal lattice, how grain boundaries are moving, that sort of thing, okay? And there are some valid reasons why you might want to go with a more sophisticated description of what constitutes failure, right? Up till this point in your, in your uh, strength of materials or mechanics of deformable solids career, you might have just said, well, I'll calculate maximum stresses in whatever direction using Morse circle, and said, well, if, either, if any of the maximum or minimum stresses exceed yield, then I've got failure. So the simplest one we use is to say, well, sigma 1 is greater than or equal to sigma yield, or sigma 2 is less than or equal to sigma yield. I'm right, assuming this is negative. Either one of those constitutes failure. All right? Well, von Mises' stress goes one further than that. It uses a more sophisticated concept of what constitutes failure. And it looks kind of like this. All right? Let's draw a plot. And instead of using x and y or sigma and tau or stress and strain, I'm going to use sigma 1 
sigma 2. Now these are the principal stresses. Now we're talking also about plain stress here. This is a 2D problem, not a 3D problem. Well, let's see. Let's make that sigma yield, that minus sigma yield. There's sigma yield, and there's minus sigma yield. Okay. So in the simplest idea, if we stay within this area here, we're good to go. Well, there are more sophisticated failure theories than that. The, the, the next most sophisticated one is called the Tresca, named after the person who thought of it, okay, the Tresca theory. And that draws a polygon, a hexagon, I guess, one, two, three, yes, hexagon, that looks like that. As long as, you, you, when you have a planar stress problem, you calculate the principal stresses, sigma 1 and sigma 2, using more circle, and you plot it. If it lies inside that hexagon, you're, you're, you have an experienced yield. If, you lie, if it lies outside this hexagon, you have experienced yield. It's that simple. Well, the von Mises stress, this is Tresca right there, von Mises goes one further, and it uses an ellipse that encloses those points. And so, so Tresca is the, is the rectangular part in here, and that ellipse, that's von Mises. Okay. Now, where does this ellipse come from? It's a fairly sophisticated argument, and it's probably not worth talking about here. There's some very good references out there, and you start reading about things like deviatoric stress tensors and that kind of thing. Bottom line is, your von Mises stress is square root of sigma 1 squared. I'm going to make sure I do this right, because there's a minus sign in there. <coughs> Excuse me plus sigma 2 squared minus sigma 1, sigma 2. Remember, sigma 1 and sigma 2 are your principal stresses. When you, if you, uh, the stress you calculate, that von Mises stress, is lower than yield, then you don't experience failure. If the stress you calculate, the von Mises stress, is higher than yield, then you do predict failure. So the big idea here is that von Mises stress uses a different concept of what constitutes material failure. Rather than simply saying, well, my stress in any direction is greater or less than yield stress, I'm going to go to this more sophisticated idea that's based on more micromechanical principles and energy models and things like that, to say, well, I'm going to draw this oval in this, this uh, space here where I've got sigma 1 and sigma 2, my principal stresses. I'm going to draw that oval. Right? And this is, this is basically a geometric description of an oval. And if, when I plot sigma 1 and sigma 2, if the point, sigma 1, sigma 2, lies inside that oval, I'm okay. No failure. If it lies outside that oval, I do experience failure. Maybe I should even highlight this. Okay? If your point sigma 1, sigma 2 is inside that dashed area, you're good to go. So that's okay. So if your if your uh, von Mises stress lies or lies inside that oval, you're fine. All right. This is enough for now. I'm going to stop here, and in the next video, I'm going to work out a problem. I'll give you a little teaser here. The way we're going to do this is we start by number one. Okay. We draw a uh, stress element. Number two. Okay. We're going to use more circle to figure out what sigma 1 and sigma 2 are. And number 3, we'll calculate von Mises stress. And number 4, we'll compare sigma v, the von Mises stress, with the yield stress. So that's the recipe we're going to follow. All right. Hope this helps for a start, and I'll see you in the next video.